Another consideration of gases is the kinetic molecular theory. And this is a very appropriately named term. Molecular refers to, of course, molecules. So this means molecules are constantly in motion. Kinetic energy is the energy of motion. So these molecules, gas molecules, are constantly in motion and they travel in straight lines until they hit something. They either hit the, another molecule or they hit the walls of the container. It also assumes that the molecules of a gas are very small compared to the distance between them. What that means is a gas is mostly empty space. And when we talked about uh, Boyle's law, which relates pressure and volume, we noticed that a gas was compressible. You could, you could squeeze on a gas and make its volume smaller. You can't do that with liquids and solids. And the reason for that is you are not actually compressing the gas mole molecules. You're simply decreasing the empty space between them. So you're moving them closer together. You can't actually compress the molecules. The pressure exerted by a gas in a container results from the collisions between the gas molecules and the container walls. And we've talked about that. When you heat the gas up, it hits the walls of the container harder and more often, and the pressure increases. Gas molecules exert no attractive or repulsive forces on each other or the walls of the container. Said another way, these collisions are perfectly elastic. So if um, X and Y hit each other, with a certain amount of energy, they leave, possibly in different directions, but with the same total amount of energy. And then finally, the average kinetic energy of gas molecules is proportional to their temperature in Kelvin. So these are some properties of the kinetic molecular theory. And there are several equations that go along with this. But in the next section, in this section, actually, we want to look at some of the implications of the kinetic molecular theory. So if we look at... Um, this is just a repeat, I'm not sure why I put it twice, but if we look at these um, different examples, if we think about the re relationship between temperature and pressure, when we heat the gas up, the molecules move faster, they hit the walls of the container more often and harder, so the pressure goes up. If we think about um, the volume and the pressure, when we decrease the volume of this container, we move the gas molecules more closely together. Said another way, there's less walls of the container, but the same number of molecules moving at the same average speed. So therefore the pressure increases because they're hitting the walls of the container more often. And in this case, if we look at increasing the number of moles of gas, there's more gas molecules in here to hit the walls of the container and hit each other, which increases the pressure. So we can explain these individual gas laws um, based on the kinetic molecular theory, which again, this is the same information as on the previous slide. One thing that comes out of this math is essentially these graphs. And what these graphs are, are probability plots. So fraction of molecules means the relative abundance, if you will, and the velocity means the average speed. Note that just like the SATs, there's an average score, but that doesn't mean everyone got the average. So if we look here, and this is oxygen at 300 K, a little above room temperature, you can see that there's quite a large range of speeds of oxygen. Some are moving at 1200 meters per second. Some are moving barely above zero meters per second. And this is in the same sample at 300 K. The highest probability is just under 400 meters per second. So the, the atom with the speed of highest probability is just under 400 meters per second. But there is a large range of speeds. So what we want to look at is two factors. What happens if you consider atoms with different molar masses? And two, what happens if you consider a single atom with the same molar mass at different temperatures? Well, let's look at this example. Let's look at xenon, krypton, argon, neon, and helium, the noble gases. As we go in this direction, the molar mass decreases. And if you look, the highest probability, the top of the peak, speed increases. So xenon, that large molecule, the highest probability speed is less than 250, around 200 meters per second. Whereas for helium, which is much smaller, it's around 1,200 meters per second that you have the highest probability. There's another thing to notice here. Not only does the highest probability speed increase, which you would expect as molecules get smaller, 
they're on average moving faster to exert the same amount of force. However, the other thing that changes is the relative amounts. If you look here, there's a relatively small range of speeds for xenon and a relatively large range of speeds for helium. So this is basically uh, the two factors here. Now on a test or something like that, you could have this labeled as one, two, three, four, five, and be asked to predict which one is helium. Well, how would you know which one is helium? Two things. One, the average speed is the highest because it's the lightest, which is at the top of the peak. The second thing is that the range of speeds is greater. Now in the second example, we only have nitrogen. So the molar mass is constant because they're all nitrogen but we have different temperatures and you'll notice a similar effect. The highest probability speed at the top of the peak increases as temperature increases. But what else increases as temperature increases? Also the spread of the molecules increases. So at 1000 K there's a greater range of speeds than there are at 500, 200, and 100. And when you talk about kinetics, which is usually in general chemistry too, a similar phenomenon takes hold because maybe only molecules here have enough energy to react. So maybe you have to heat something up to cause it to have enough energy to react. So for example, at 1000 K, a certain percentage of them would have enough energy to react. At 500 K, a certain percentage would. And at 200 K, almost none would have enough energy to react. Now this is a bad example with nitrogen because nitrogen's pretty unreactive. It's not completely unreactive, um, but it's a similar idea. So two phenomena, as the temperature increases, the highest probability speed goes up and the range of speeds also increases. So this is um, the kinetic molecular theory. Now, it's important to note that there is math behind this. Um, like things like mean free path and root mean squared velocity come into play in diffusion and effusion and the kinetic molecular theory. Those aren't going to be asked directly here. Instead, we want you to know the outcomes of these things. So the outcomes that we just discussed as we change the temperature of nitrogen or the difference in the um, highest probability speed of this series of noble gases because of their molar masses. As they get lighter, the highest probability speed increases. So outcomes are important, but not so much actually doing those calculations.